Now, uh, we're turning to something slightly different. I'm delighted to say we're joined on the line by uh, Noel Healy, Dublin footballer, of course, four time All Ireland winner, uh, four time All Star as well, former player of the year, and uh, much more importantly, I suppose. Uh, at these times, uh, an intensive care doctor and uh, an anaesthetist as well at Temple Street. Uh, Noel, good morning to you. Morning, how are you? Busy times, I would imagine. Um, yeah, yeah, it's busy. Um, kind of strange times, I suppose, at the moment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's unusual. Is all of your work at the minute coronavirus related? Um, no, it's not. I suppose, you know, normal healthcare problems and conditions don't don't go away. Um, which is kind of something to keep in the back of mind as well. I think, you know, it's, it's a kind of trap that you need to be careful not to fall into. But, um, yeah, it's definitely to the forefront of our mind and to all of the procedures that we're doing definitely is kind of making sure that we're we're protecting ourselves and, and protecting our patients as well. Yeah. How long, I mean, you're, you're, I know I've read some pieces with you and the general assumption from everything you hear from frontline healthcare workers at the best of times that days can be very long. Has that changed for you just yet in terms, in terms of the length of those days or... Is that something that's coming down the track? Do you think? Um, no, I suppose at the moment things are are, are just t- starting to kind of get busier. Um, and I suppose you know, as I said, in Ireland we've kind of had had a bit of luck, and and you know we've had a little bit of time to prepare. So there's been an, an awful lot of emphasis on on making sure that we're taking rest and we're taking rest, and you know that's been great as well. We've kind of changed our shifts and things like that to to make sure that people are getting enough time off. Because we don't really know what's coming down down the line, and and you know how things are going to get. Um, so no, like you know, we've kind of just all been working together to try to give each other as much of, of time off as 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 we feel we need. Like if you know that we're not kind of being flogged, I suppose. Yeah, um, there was obviously people are following the numbers in this thing. There was two hundred and fifty new cases yesterday. It brings it to I think around about two thousand now overall, or just short of it. And the expectation that we're going to be at nine thousand or maybe over that in less than a week's time. What's the in terms of the the anticipation of that that you mentioned? Is it something that you're thinking about that's in the back of your mind, or um, is it very much just to focus on what needs to be done today? Um, yeah, look, I suppose it's it has to be um, to, to the forefront of your minds and. I suppose for the last two weeks and, and maybe even three weeks, you know, just a little bit before, I suppose the, the schools were closed and kind of people started really taking this thing seriously. Um, you know, I, I was talking to, to colleagues in other hospitals and um, even to some of the girls on the, on the team um, that would have worked in different hospitals and you could see the changes that were happening and the planning that was going ahead and kind of trying to get different um, equipment in and making plans to kind of, you know, change wards and to to cross-skill um, different as well, uh, medical specialities into looking after more respiratory illnesses and more intensive care um, skills and things like that. So you do kind of have to always be, be forward planning, but I suppose, you know, you kind of have to have to look after what you have in front of you as well. So it's just kind of a little bit of both, just, you know, being aware of the plans that are, that are in place and the infrastructures that are put in place and, you know, where you might need to be and things you might need to 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 upskill yourself in, um, but obviously, you know, not forgetting that you've you, you've patients to look after as well. Noel, you mentioned there that there's obviously been a big effort in terms of getting the correct volume of equipment in over the last couple of weeks. How is that process in terms of what you're seeing? Are you well equipped at the moment or is there still more that needs to be done? Um, well, I suppose in, in Temple Street, it's, we're in a bit of a different situation in terms of, mm. you know, looking at the at the data and things like that in the hospitals, it doesn't seem to, to affect children, um, thankfully, as much as it does seem to affect the, old, the older adults. Um, so, you know, we're kind of just, I suppose, making sure if, kind of see, you know, if there's things that we can do to, to help other hospitals and help alleviate pressure from that point of view and, you know, if we can give our skills elsewhere or even advice and things like that elsewhere. But um, in relation to your own, you mentioned the cross scaling. Well, in relation to your own um, training and experience uh, around ICU and the um, anesthesiologist aspect of it as well, how appropriate to your own experience is our respiratory complications, or is there a bit of an upscaling in that regard as well now? Um, well, I suppose for us, like that would kind of be what we'd be used to, to dealing with in, in intensive care, particularly around the winter season and the flu season. We'd be we'd be well used to kind of dealing with an awful lot of people who would have respiratory complications from, you know, flu uh, or, you know, different infections. Um, so it was in terms of the pathologies and the, the sicknesses and the respiratory conditions that we're dealing with, it's not something that would be 
hugely unusual to us because the, the problem is the volume that it comes in, um, which is kind of the, the main problem. Um, and then I suppose there's always this kind of the, the different fear in that it's not, you know, when, you, when you're at work, usually you, you close the door and you leave it and you can always even forget about that day. But I suppose you, you leave it and you go out and everything that I'm talking about on the news is, is this. And, you know, I've never heard so many people talk about ventilators and things like that. You know, even my own go home, like, you know, speaking to family, uh, they're, they're asking about it. And, you know, even just the, the fear that you could bring something home or bring something to other people in terms of the infection as well. So um, from that point of view, it's, I suppose it's, it's totally different to anything that we've ever experienced. Yeah, like even on that point, I was I read a piece during the week. I can't remember which paper it was in, um, with a doctor who was saying, you know, that this wasn't something that you invite on yourself. You train to be a doctor because it's um, something that was attractive to you at that time. It's obviously, uh, generally decently well paid. It um, can be a decent lifestyle. Obviously, you get to help people and um, save people's lives. But putting your own life at risk is not necessarily something that you're explicitly uh, signing up to when you, when you go down this route. Is that something that you're concerned about, uh, Noel, in terms of the, the possibly contracting this thing at the front line? Um, you know, it's funny, like, if I think, you know, even just from talking to, to colleagues and college friends and um, even family members who are in, you know, healthcare professions, like, I think especially when it started, a lot of us probably would have been in the situation where we had treated a patient um, who would subsequently later had tested positive. So, you know, the usual... Um, I suppose the procedure would be that you'd contact Occupational Health and they, you know, most times they'd kind of just do a contact tracing and try to deem, you know, what risk you'd be. So I was in that situation um, last week and I, you know, went home from work, didn't go into work the next day. We tried to figure out whether I was able to go back. And like my first thought and the first that a lot of people have, you know, it's absolutely not, God, I'm worried that I'd get sick with this. It. It's, you know, who have you met in the past few days that you could have passed it on to or, you know, things like that. And I suppose that's where the kind of social distancing thing kind of really comes to the forefront of your mind. And also just even kind of a little bit of a sense of guilt that, you know, are you going to be off work for two weeks that you can't go, you know, back and, and help your colleagues? You know, have you call shifts that somebody else is going to have to put work on? Are you putting, you know, your own team and work under a little bit of pressure? So I think you've seen kind of from the, the people who have come home, the people who have signed back in that I, I don't think that's something really that's to the forefront of our minds. I think everybody just wants to help um, which is, you know, it's brilliant. But obviously, you know, it is important that we look after ourselves and work, you know, from a physical point of view and it's a mental point of view, but also just making sure that we're protecting ourselves and, you know, you know, we're educated and using the right equipment as well. From yeah. that mental point of view, Noel, have you managed to decompress over the last couple of weeks? Obviously, it's a bit trickier now with not being able to have any organised training when it comes to football. Yeah, I know. You kind of, you lose that little bit of balance, I suppose, um, you know, as I said, you, you leave work and you, you turn on the radio or you, you flick on your phone and it's just the same thing over and over and over again. Stats, statistics, figures, pictures from around the world. Um, so it is very hard to decompress. So I suppose you just have to get a little bit inventive with this, you know, um, reading books, things like that. Um, I suppose, you know, exercise is obviously still massively important um, just purely from a decompression and, and, and a relaxation point of view. The country is very squarely behind the work that you're doing, Noel, and that your colleagues um, are, are doing as well. I'm sure it hasn't been uh, been lost to me. How much the country came out last night at eight o'clock and and applauded. Obviously, I I did wonder about the like all of us plebs out clapping on the doorstep. To you know, there's a it feels like a great sort of community uh, activation that, that gives us all a bit of crumbs crumbs of comfort. I wonder what sort of an impact it would have for somebody like yourself, whether whether it means anything at all. Um, yeah, oh, look, it's, it's lovely. Um, I was actually, like, out in my back garden um, and all the neighbours were, were clapping and you could hear kind of cars beeping and things like that. And it is lovely. I suppose you can see it in the, you know, that Feed the, feed the Heroes, um, I suppose, movement that's going as well. And, I suppose we're kind of lucky in some ways is that we can feel like we're we're doing something in terms of we go to work and we feel like we're helping and contributing towards it. Um, and I suppose, you know, everybody just wants to help and everybody just wants to do their bit. So um, I think that's where that comes from. But no, look, it's lovely. But I think as it's kind of been said before, you know, it's not going to be the healthcare workers um, that are going to, to, to solve this or to, 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 to you know, slow this process. Um, 
I know they use the kind of the, the line, the front, the word, the, like the phrase, the frontline staff and things like that. And I think you know it's something that's kind of come to the fore a little bit more. Is that it's in uh, like you know as cheesy as it is in everybody's hands, and that like it's you know we can only treat people that get the disease. But as Catherine Motherway had put on prime time, you know what you need to do is just not get this virus. You know, be be intelligent, be be sensible in in who you're meeting and how many people you're kind of meeting. You know, with the simple things, washing your hands. You know, cleaning your surfaces. Just, I mean, it, it, it's not. It's not going to be the doctors and the nurses and the the, the porters and um, care assistants that are going to solve this problem. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I know that um, the modesty won't allow you to say it, but you are putting literally putting your uh, lives on the, on the line for this as well. So that's very much appreciated. I presume there's a camaraderie uh, aspect to it as well. Like it's almost maybe um, without trying to be too cliched about it, but akin to the football side of things, I presume that amongst you it's very much in the trenches and um, we're at the front line of this thing and everybody's pulling together. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, It's been, you know, it's, it's been really nice. There's a great atmosphere um, in the hospital between everyone just kind of, yeah, totally just working together to look after each other, you know, making sure that, that we're all safe and even just people checking in um, with each other in different hospitals. Uh, like I have, a, I have a sister who's a nurse in James's who had previously worked in the oncology um, day were there, but who's been redeployed to the, to the ED. So kind of just checking in and see how she's getting, you know, getting on. Um, I've never been in contact so so frequently with different college friends just to see how they're getting on in different hospitals and in different specialities and if they have any questions about anything or, you know, if I have any questions with them. So it's been, it's been brilliant even just like, checking in with people, seeing how they're getting on and just even sharing, you know, different education bits as well. Um, it's nice. It is a great atmosphere. And I suppose, you know, when you do get the the free lunch and things like that into, into work, it does give you a little bit of a pick-me-up just to kind of know that people are, are really appreciative of, you know, that you're you're looking after their, their loved ones. Yeah, well, definitely the country is uh, very much behind you. The Owen mentioned the football a little bit earlier on there. For 13 years, I think, Noel, if I'm right, or thereabouts, um, you've been would have been at this point of the year, obviously ramping things up from a, a Dublin perspective. You I, you may not even have time to miss it, I suppose, at the minute with everything going on. Um, I know you absolutely would miss it. Um, yeah, you'd miss. You know, I think the the dress room is kind of the the one thing that you'd you'd miss. The even the the competition and stuff, and just the the bit of fun with the girls. Um, and yeah, you know, when the weather is getting nice and you're doing your own bit of skills or a bit of runs around the place, you'd. you'd You'd love for it to be in a match, you know. It's just, the weather's kind of picking up, but um, yeah, I suppose it kind of it pales a bit uh, into the background at the moment with everything that's going on, unfortunately. You've given very clear uh, instructions to the country there in terms of what we need to do to um, try and beat this thing. Anything else that you want to say before we wrap? No, not at all. No, just um, thanks to everybody so far for 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 doing their bit, and hopefully, um, I know it's going to be. A little bit of a, of, a, of a long road for everyone, but um, you know it's been really positive to see everybody you know buying into this, and hopefully um, you know we can we can get through it. Yeah, well, listen, uh, keep strong, keep safe, keep well. Thanks so much. I know it's a crazy busy time. Thanks so much for taking the call this morning. Not at all. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Dublin footballer Noel Healy, Doctor Noel Healy, on the line there. Um, crazy time um, right around the country, particularly for our frontline healthcare workers. Um, and uh, really pleased that well could take the time to have a chat with us there this morning. Owen makes us all feel a little bit um, insignificant in uh, what it is we do. Yeah, absolutely. Com completely uh, insignificant, really. Like, I mean, there, there's only small things we can do. I mean, like, it's fantastic to hear, like, people signing up to the HSC, even on a voluntary basis like Keith there even just donating a few quid to, to feed the heroes there are little things that we can do to make us less significant on a day-to-day -day basis and they, they've been well publicized over the last few days and even just slowing this whole thing down as Noel said there as a lot of the experts have been saying on national media platforms over the last couple of weeks we know what we have to do we just have to stay away from other people not allow this thing to spread and that will make their job somewhat easier it won't be easy it won't be easy whatsoever and it's going to get tougher but we can perhaps ease it a little bit for them yeah yeah such a huge part to play right it is 8 57 on this uh, Friday morning you're watching out today am which is the sports breakfast show from Off the Ball. You can uh, get in contact with us 087 918 180.